take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Hey, how's everybody doing? And yes, it is Friday. Whoa. And it's Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend, people. Yes, a round of applause for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyway, I hope everybody has a safe, blessed Labor Day weekend with some wonderful fellowship with your family and friends and enjoying all the blessings God has bestowed upon you to be able to do this and all the wonderful food you're going to get to cook and eat. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be fabulous for, for many, many people. So again, I hope everybody's doing great, got great plans uh, for this special weekend. Kids are out of school on Monday. <laughs> anyway, the kids are glad about that as well. Well, today we got a lot to cover in the first segment. We're obviously we're talking. We're going to be talking about Candace Owens and her downfall. What's going on? She, you know, comes across proclaiming to be a Christian and, and, and all of this stuff and then all these things uh, happening in her interviews and things that she's done. Um, this is me seven days ago. We're gonna get we're gonna get into this. We're gonna get right into this. This is me seven days ago talking to, just a couple minutes talking about Candace Owens. Really care. I'll just say it. I don't care for Candace Owens. And even before the whole uh, the 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 tater tot brothers crap or her interviewing him this I, I started watching her prior before that and and I did subscribe to Candace Owens's channel and I and then just one day I'm watching her and something just came over me like I don't like her I I think it's the way she was attacking uh Steven Crowder and I thought it was just kind of it, it was in it was in bad taste. Um, was Steven Crowder that video of him uh, kind of berating his wife was uncomfortable. He wasn't kind of he was, I, you know, sometimes I'm at a loss for words. So uh, he was berating his wife and it was uncomfortable. It was. I don't know. I just found it inappropriate for her to be like just just hammering on him and then g going after him because he wanted more money for whatever. Uh, I guess because he was going to join the, the, the people they were with. And if y'all had watched that video, uh, it, it's Daily Wire. I, I had a, sometimes I get a brain fart. I don't know if y'all do. I'm old. I just get a brain fart. It's Daily Wire. That's who Candace Owens was with. Uh, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, all of those, all of those guys, and um, that—that's what I w alluded me. <laughs> um, gosh, I can't think of what they're called. I'm just having a brain fart right now. But Daily you know, probably Wire. Know Peterson and all of those guys. Good all ball. of them are with that one organization. They're under that umbrella. But. I Rochelle's a goofball, by the way. Just letting you know. I don't think they control their content, though. They they still get to, to do what they want with their content, but... She, Candace Owens, was all like prior to... I mean, I, I'm like, I don't... She just rubbed me the wrong way, so I unsubscribed to her. And then, lo and behold, <laughs> here she come out saying some... Uh, uh, some things about the Catholics, and then she ends up leaving that group. And then she she had done an interview prior to that with uh, with the the tater tot uh, Andrew Tate, and he's tell she bought everything he said hook line and sinker. And I'm like, I really don't like her. I mean, I didn't like her prior to that, and then just reinforced it. It's like she said, I did my research, I read books, 
I did my research, and, and and Andrew didn't do nothing. It was like ten years ago, and if I did when I did something ten years ago, is it really going to hold it to me now? Well, yeah, it depends on what it is. <laughs> Some things don't have uh, limitations on it. And some things do. But apparently the tate, the tater tots got arrested again yesterday and had to spend overnight in jail because they have more charges against them because they are sex traffickers for the lover boy method. And she blew it off. And I'm like, what is wrong with her? If she did her research and read the indictment, which she said, I did, I read the indictment. If y'all have looked at any shows with the indictment, the list, uh, the, the audio conversations, the screenshots of the text messages, they were literally lover boying these women. I don't like listening to myself speak, by the way. So um, I do have to watch my own videos when I'm editing them. Yeah. And then I'm. My nose is running. I hear myself sniff. What I, I you know, <laughs> I could slap at myself. That's that's what I need to do. So yeah, so her with the tater tots and and all of this mess. Um. So now we're gonna go to uh, the next segment. Well, actually, it's all gonna be like one segment, but we're I'm, I'm breaking it up into. Uh, these different videos I've got lined up to go over this stuff. And as a clarification in that video, because I am a goofball, um, it wasn't a Catholic thing. It was a, a Jewish thing. I don't know why I said Catholic. That's like I said, sometimes I, I do make mistakes. And, uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't catch it before, but, you know, it is what it is. But, um... This next clip is from uh, Breaking News Points, and basically he's going to give us, like, when it when it started to happen, like when she left Daily Wire, which she joined them, like, three years ago. She was with them un until, like, March 22nd, 2024, so her departure wasn't that long ago from the Daily Wire from after she made those comments and just... Uh, Pissed off, I, she pissed off Ben Shapiro. I don't know if you guys listen to Ben Shapiro, but uh, some people in my household listen. She listens to him, and I know he's he he's conservative and stuff. I I just don't watch him. I I don't know. I mean, you know, we all like different things and what we're attracted to and stuff like that. I'm sure there's people going to watch my video and go, oh, my Lord, I can't listen to that voice, you know, and, and that's fine. That's fine. I completely understand it. But let's get into this. Let's get into this. This morning from the Daily Wire CEO, Jeremy Boring, he tweets, quote, Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. So this comes after a lot of internal consternation between Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro that has exploded in the open after October the 7th. Candace has been quite vocal in an anti-war stance both on Ukraine and has carried over a lot of that consistency to the war between Israel and Gaza. She's been particularly particularly outspoken about civilian casualties in Gaza and has also been against sending U.S. weapons to Israel. Now, obviously, this all broke out into the open. You'll recall a few months ago when Ben Shapiro was asked on camera and called her comments about Israel, quote, disgraceful. Uh, this led to a public spat between the two in which Ben replied to her and said, Candace, you are welcome to quit at any time. Uh, there's some speculation that that might have been to involve having to pay her out of her contract. The circumstances, obviously, of her departure are not 100 percent clear. What we do know, though, is that it came almost immediately after a major uh, fracas, I guess you could say, with with the ADL. Let's go and put this up there on the screen. Just yesterday, the ADL, the so-called Anti-Defamation League, and one of the most censorious organizations and pro-Israel groups in the U.S., they put out an article stating, quote, 
White supremacist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes is praising Candace Owens, quote, vitriolic anti-Semitism. It is hardly surprising, but it does set off alarm bells. When bigoted people come together to push an anti-Semitic agenda, it adds fuel to the fire. Uh, so now, you, you know it's bad. <laughs> when, when, when some psycho extremist comes out and praises you. You know it's bad. But he's fixing to pull up Candace's response to this guy. Damn, this Fuentes guy. Good night. So Candace replied to this. She says, quote, I do not know Nick Fuentes. You already know that. What I do know is that everyone can see what you guys are doing to me. Your pattern is well established and the world is waking up against it. My crime is having stood up for myself against your network of smears. Now, Candace has particularly come under major fire since October 7th from a lot of these major conservative media or a lot of these conservatives organizations or organizations like the ADL, like APAC, uh, like the Republican Jewish Coalition and others have attacked her relentlessly. She has not uh, given in and, in fact, has only escalated some of the things that she's talking about. This has led to some major debates on her channel, for example, with rabbis, uh, leading to some, frankly, wild discussions around what exactly constitutes anti-Semitism and doesn't. Uh, but most importantly, I think for our purposes, it does seem that she had no idea that, she, that yesterday would be her last day. We actually have a clip here that we can play from her very last Daily Wire appearance. She says at the end, I'll see you tomorrow. And she hints at the fact that some of the uh, consternation that she's kind of bubbling to the surface. Let's take a listen. I thank everybody who has been on this journey with me, people that have supported me. I especially want to thank all of the Jewish people that have been in the comments saying how outraged they are. And I know that it is especially difficult for you guys right now because you are being smeared, you know? I mean, I am, I'm not going to go away. I'm going to use my God-given voice to talk about the things that are important for me. I'm just asking to be left alone, or at least just report the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. But don't worry, because we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode. So as you... Well, when you're in a public forum, like I, even myself, if, if I'm saying things that are outrageous, people are going to question it because I'm, I'm putting myself out there, and so is she. So she... Of course, people are going to scrutinize what you say. There's always somebody th that's that's an opposition. That's just common sense. <sighs> the thing is, is that if you don't, her sticking her neck out. I guess yeah, she's she, we have free speech. She can say the she can say all these things that she had said, but maybe she should have consulted. Cons did a little more consulting before she did that episode where it it created a firestorm and pissed off Ben Shapiro and y'all don't no you don't want to piss off Ben Shapiro guy has millions of followers and and he's Jewish I mean maybe she should have talked to him before she's like hey I'm thinking about talking about X Y Z could you give me some some feedback or, you know, what? where should I go with this? You know, this is my thoughts on it. What do you think? Before she went on air, but I don't know. She didn't think about all that. But anyway, let's continue. Okay, we're moving on. Okay, this is a uh, Apostate Prophet YouTube channel show. And um, I watched this. Uh... Gosh, it's been several days since this came out, but I, I watched it. They did a live show. Uh, Apostate Prophet, obviously you can see his name up. At, he's up at the top. He is a, I guess you'd say ex or reformed Muslim Islam, study, practice in Islam. I think he's from Turkey. But he's an atheist. Okay, I'm just just giving you some background here. He is an atheist. The guy below him, his name, I believe his first name is Daniel. His last name, I know his last name is Woods. So I believe he's Daniel Woods. And he's a Christian, right? They do a lot of shows and a lot of live shows together, just really hammering how bad Islam is. Um, as you can see, his... Uh, 
apostates uh, on his page, <laughs> his background. My boy come in here that night I was watching this and he laughed. He laughed at the, the background because it was saying stay away from uh, Islam. I really like him. Yeah, we need to pray for him that he'll come to the Lord. But he respects Christianity. He respects it. He despises Islam. And I just found his show really interesting. But what's cool here is uh, they're going to be talking about Candace Owens in this little video she had did. Um, and they're going to critique it. So I thought this would go well with, with the programming today. And uh, let's get into it. So um, I, I did this uh, after two things. One was seeing this video here. The second was uh, that day, Candace Owens, Andrew Tate, and Dan Bilzerian, actually the top authorities on Zionism, of course, mm -hmm. started uh, held a Twitter spaces um, where they talked about uh, Jews and Zionism and Israel. And they, they and I, I didn't listen to most of it. I caught a part where they were saying some really messed up things and just uh, talking about asking questions where Andrew Tate's been. And another thing is they're funny. Daniel's funny. They're both funny. They're really funny. Um, Y'all check out their shows. Um, definitely. Uh, if you go to a prostate profit, I'll, you know what? I'll get a link to Daniel's um, YouTube page and I'll put it in the description. I'll make myself a note to do that. But they're funny and they have good programs. Specifically, was just saying that uh, we're not even allowed to ask these questions. Like, I'm, uh, after asking these questions, they will probably try to, I don't know, uh, f f accuse us of this and this and that. So I decided to make a mockery tweet. But here is what Kenneth Owens said, and this is really messed up. Many moons ago, before they decided to establish Israel as a country, I know you've read like the short version in a classroom, and it was like, oh, the Holocaust happened, and then we realized that Israel needs to stay. No, that's not how it went down. That's not how it went down at the F. Just her saying that, being, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm at a loss. I, I always have a brain fart. But she's being so flippant about speaking about the Holocaust. Well, no, it's, it, you know, you're thinking about the Holocaust and it, it just didn't go down that way. I was like, why are you talking like this? When I was watching this, I was just like kind of appalled by the... By the way, she was saying that. Anyway, let me know what you think. Oh, okay. Catholics and Christians were going missing on Passover. And then they would find bodies, okay, across Europe. And they were able to trace them back to Jews. Blood libel. There weren't Jews, okay? These were Frankists. Now, uh, I want to say one thing, which is I don't even understand uh, none of that has anything to do with what she says at the beginning, which is the founding of, of Israel. Um, secondly, um, people didn't have the decision to create a country named Wait, Israel after, after on, the what, Holocaust. What she... It's just so dumb. She is not even talking. She's not even. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. She's trying to. Get... <laughs> right there is a big reason why I like him. He says, and he's. Says it in a serious way. She's so dumb. They're gonna go. He's gonna go on to explain why she don't know what she's talking about. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> she's so dumb. That was just okay. Refute a popular narrative without even knowing what the narrative actually is. Uh, but she's then she's then going for the blood libel and actually validating medieval blood libels which have been thoroughly debunked and proven to be false on every occasion and she is going with it she's actually going with the most insane theories which were made up to vilify and uh and, and pogrom and genocide jewish populations and this is the problem with candace owens the first clip I made of myself uh, at the beginning of this video where Candace Owen says, I did my research. I read books. I, 
Look, I'm not an authority on a lot of stuff. Probably most everything. I'm just giving my opinion on what I think about what I'm reacting to. And it's interesting. And I'm always learning every day. But she comes out and says the most outrageous things. And I think this is what pissed Ben Shapiro off. She came out and said all of this stuff about Israel. And she doesn't know what she's talking about. I don't even know what she's talking about. I don't know enough to to comment on it. All I do know is is that America needs to support Israel. We probably do need to be sending them weapons if they need help. Because Hamas, the, the terrorists are are attacking them and then going and hiding in the populations like it's some kind of uh, guerrilla warfare. They're hard to find. They're in cells. They're hiding in churches, schools. What is Israel supposed to do? I mean, this is my little minuscule understanding. I don't know all the particular political in and out, but on the surface, they attack Israel. Israel's supposed to respond. What, are they just supposed to sit back and keep getting attacked? I don't know. I mean, it's a touchy subject. And if you don't know, you can't, you can't be like just saying a bunch of gobbledygoo, right? What was it there? Were you saying something? Um, did... Uh, I, I don't know if I don't understand Candace's uh, brilliant <laughs> argumentation strategy, brilliant. but did she just say you th- you all ha- absorbed this story that after the Holocaust uh, the Jews got Israel and so on? No, they were killing a bunch of Christian kids. Like what? I, I don't even get exactly. It. I'm not it's understanding. Like the ca- maybe she's on some drugs or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I'm saying. You've been told this is how Israel <laughs> happened. No, Israel happened. Yeah, no, Israel happened because Jews were killing Christian kids. Wait, what? So wait, so you're killing a bunch of Christian kids and they said, let's give you a nation? Is that is that what she just said? They're like, hey, it, it like who's it. killing all these Christian kids? Oh, we've discovered that it's the Jews. You know what we need to do? Give them their own nation. <laughs> this is a very, oh, wait a minute. Did Jingoistic Pig said, I did screen record and upload these clips and got a bunch of new followers. So I'd like to thank Candice. Um, Jingoistic pig. Uh, I know that uh, you recorded the whole thing that she held here and and posted about it. Uh, Can you tell me if the context here is is right? Because it's very confusing when she says that, I know you heard that uh, after the Holocaust, they decided to create a country, Israel, but that's not how it happened at all. Uh, It was just a bunch of uh, Christian kids were missing and then they traced it back to Jews. Is this really the context or am I missing something? Because of the- Do you think Candace is part of the, the cabal that wants to rewrite history where they come in as as sheep or they come in as wolves disguised as sheep? She's one of them. Comes in as a wolf disguised as a sheep to, you know, because we all know Candace came, came out and, and, you know, I liked her at first. I liked her programming. I liked it. Like I said at the beginning, and then all of a sudden something's wrong. Something's telling me something something's amiss here. The left, this, this cabal, whatever you want to call them, uh, her with the tater tots and stuff. Apparently her husband has been friends with, with Andrew Tate for years. And that's probably why she came to bat for him. But they say some outrageous things, and it's like either they're twisting truths to try to change history. I don't know. I'm just just asking questions here, just just in thinking. You know, my my thought process. Like I said, I'm not like this. You know, complete total knowledge of all of the history buff. But I I do know what she is implementing. It's like is, is she trying to change history by saying these things? This sounds really really insane. Just please let me know. <laughs> And so just like Leo Frank killed Mary Fagan on Passover back in 1913 or 1914, I can't remember the exact date, he did it during Passover for a reason, this Frankish cult. 
All right. So, um, yeah, Jinguistic Pick said there is no more context than that. It was insane. I, yeah, I, I, I can, I gather that. She's now connecting that somehow to, uh, to Leo Frank. Let's recap that. Leo Frank killed Mary Fagan on Passover back in 1913 or 1914. I can't remember the exact date. He did it during Passover for a reason. This Frankist cult. She's now connecting Leo Frank, probably because of his name, to the Frankists. Uh, who uh, engage in child sacrifices uh, and so and drink uh, bloods of children and so on. Now, um, Leo Frank is a very, very controversial issue. Leo Frank was a guy who was in charge of a factory uh, somewhere in America in the early uh, 20th century. He was, uh, without evidence, baselessly accused of having murdered um, somebody who, who worked there uh, or, or, who, or who was there. And... There was there were different uh, people who were accused, but um, he was accused by the majority of people. Um, they without and he was accused with no concrete evidence back then. Like there was no smoke and gun. It was just he was condemned by the uh, I guess the public and all that, and they're, they're all screaming they want uh, justice, and they executed him. And years later. They found, the courts found, we didn't have enough evidence to do this. He was unjustly tried. He didn't get a fair trial. Right. What's giving him proper, uh, you know, the, the proper treatment expected in a court of law, uh, attacked him, put him in front of a, of a court uh, where they found him, despite insufficient evidence, guilty. And later on, the guy was lynched. I cannot say that the guy was uh, definitely guilty or innocent. Nobody can really say. Later on, much later, he was. Um, it was ruled. I, th I think half a century later, it, it was ruled that the court did not give him the proper treatment uh, expected under the law, um, and that the ruling is basically void. However, we don't know what actually happened. But the guy was basically killed based on accusations and suspicions without being given the proper procedure of, uh, you know, in, in a court. Now yeah, I mean, he could have just, well, he could have been guilty. We don't know, right? We don't know. But they hung that man. Now, that guy, however, has nothing to do at all with these blood libels in the, you know, from centuries ago. Plus, the blood... Not according to Candace. Candace says that he's connected. ...libels that uh, arose in the history of Europe and outside of Europe have nothing to do with Leo Frank, who also has nothing to do with Frankists. She is rambling a bunch of weird nonsense just within these 40 seconds. She's talking about uh, Frankists being the ones who are, uh, who are who are sacrificing children and drinking their blood. Frankists are a movement of Jews who are a tiny, a small offshoot from um, Sabbateans who followed a guy named uh, Sabbatai Zvi who declared himself the Messiah, I think in the 1600s or so. Uh, let me see. Let me see quickly to verify that. And this is what also what I like about him, too. He is researching why he's on air. He's looking up. And he's he's astute in history. And if he don't know something, he goes, he goes, well, wait a minute. Let me let me check this. Right. Y'all need to check him out. He's really good. That um, actually much later than that. <laughs> wait. Frankism came in the 18th and 19th centuries for, uh, based on the Sabbateans uh, from Sabbatite Zvi, who was around in the 1600s. So in the 1600s, Sabbatite Zvi was a, a, a Jewish teacher who declared himself the Messiah and who started creating his own cult-like uh, group and who was then, not long after, rejected and condemned by Jewish authorities around the world. So this is a rejected Jewish cult. Uh, that rejected. So they're rejected by the Jews, but a Candace Owens is lopping them, lopping them together. I don't know what her agenda is here. I mean, we're going to continue to listen, but I just, you know, thinking about it, it's like, why is she making this con uh, connection? Is she uh, wanting to hurt the Jews? Why? Why would she do this? Just asking questions.
Jewish cult later on disappeared by when, when Sabbatai Zvi converted to Islam under pressure of the Ottoman Sultan, and uh, much of his cult disappeared into into um, becoming a secret group in Turkey, and they most likely went extinct. There is no proof at all that these guys actually uh, existed after that point. The Frankists were a group that were based on this idea of of the Sabbateans. Uh, those Frankists developed a an even more cultish uh, Jewish a little religious group um, but but they only came into existence in the 18th and 19th century but they were very small in number and concentrated and they had nothing to do with all the cases of Jews being accused of killing children and drinking their blood because stuff like that goes back to the 11 uh, to the 11th century 12th century 13th 14th 15th and so on so none of this makes any sense you know, no time in my life. And like I said, you know, past videos, I, I didn't have a life over the years. I, I love documentaries, right? <laughs> Either reading about it or documentaries on World War II. And uh, my son and I got together. Uh, we still need to finish some seasons. Uh, we were watching. I don't know who put it out again. Another brain fart. Um the series on um, World War II. That in my whole lifetime, I had never heard such a thing. What Candace Owens is implying. That Jews were drinking children, Christian children's blood. What the hell? This is insane. I, I don't understand it. Why would she say this nonsense? What is her, what is her motivation? Really? What is her motivation? Why would she come out and do this? And it looks like she's at her house. She's got her phone up and she's just spouting off a bunch of nonsense. But she did her research. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is chronologically absolutely idiotic on Candace's behalf. And she's acting like, oh, I'm not accusing Jews. I'm just accusing these other people. <laughs> it's liter it's literally the it's the it's the spoken version of you know how <laughs> like a crazy person will have all these pictures all over the wall with all the strings attached to everything else, yes, yes. and everything's <laughs> yes. connected to everything else it's like the spoken version of that right the the insane by the way someone pointed out that one of the pictures behind her is actually uh, her husband with Andrew Tate from years yes, ago yes I uh, seen it. We're gonna look at another video after after we're done reviewing this. That that there somebody else and this uh, other guy saying it too. That uh, yeah, they're friends with with the tater tots. Yeah, this is her husband. Um, his Michael Frank, I think, and this is uh, Andrew Tate. They have a photo together. Nice, nice. On the wall in their home. On the wall in their home. Can't tell. Someone someone zoom, someone zoomed in on it. Th this this guy. The Tater Top Brothers are in, under indictment for uh, trafficking in, with the lover boy method. And she still has a picture on her wall in her home with this man. There is video after video of him self-snitching. Him literally describing, actually he had a course. You would pay money to take this course. You would pay him money to take a course. And it was called a PhD. Pimp and hose degree. I'm not making this up. Pimp and hose degree. You could get your PhD, pimp and hose degree, and learning how to uh, traffic these women. To get them, get them enslaved to you. So they could be on, um, what what is that, OnlyFans or God knows whatever those cam, I guess they call them cam girls or whatever. But Candace Owens. Claiming to be Christian. Now, I'm not, you know, we're all sinful. I'm guilty of sin as well. But I'm just saying, she takes his side. And this man has for years had, there's slews and slews and slews, endless of videos of him saying this, teaching people how to pimp hoes. I watched, I watched tons of it. In fact, apostles. Apostate prophet here has a um, 
He has a couple of shows, maybe two or three, where he goes in depth. That's where I learned uh, a lot of the stuff that was going on from his show, where him and uh, Woods here went over the whole indictment, and it was intense. It was intense. And, and pointed it out. Yeah, yeah. She she reminds me of this uh, this Charlie meme, which is uh, this yeah. One. There you go. That's that, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> You should, she do something, you should do something like that. You should put her face over that. Oh, man. <laughs> and like put 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 all the names of the Frank this and this and that, put all this stuff up on the board. Put put that face over Charlie and then put all the okay. stuff she said in, in the ends of the strings. Okay. I apologize. Her husband's name is George Farmer. Fine. OK. Uh, <laughs> she said Frank so much that I also started calling uh, a farmer Frank. But, uh, so her husband is George Farmer. He is, comes from a very rich family um, that is led currently I think, by nice. her, her father in law, Michael Farmer. And um, Michael Farmer actually just made a, a thread on Twitter distancing himself from Candace and oh. um, and and her husband oh. and said Smart. that uh, anti-Semitism in its in all its forms is disgusting and he oh. knows this very well and he works on a board for uh, Christians and Jews and all that so e even the father-in-law openly had to distance himself publicly from her because she went insane it's just uh, it's, it's, it's really messed up. Which is masquerading behind Jews still participates in this shit to this day, okay? Why would you want, as a small nation that is the size of New Jersey, okay, why would you want the pedophiles to flee there? Like, why would you want the pedophiles to be procreating? Hmm, unless, unless the nation of Israel may have been established by some Frankists. And it's looking like Theodore Herzl. Mystery solved. <laughs> So mystery so solved. <laughs> he said mystery solved. What is she saying? Oh my god. This is insane what she's saying. So so she's acting like, oh no, I'm I'm not at all accusing uh Jews as a as a whole. I'm just saying that there is a secret group of Jews who also who control the country and behind, founded the country. Yeah. Who happened to be behind this whole country, Israel, and who happened to to kill children and drink their blood, and who happened to be behind any Jewish significant force, and so on. This is just such a disgusting and dishonest way of attacking Jews with conspiracy theories. This is, um, but there is something that she says at the end of this one here, of this clip, which gave me the idea to make that stupid tweet. Herzl's family was from the exact same area in Moravia and in Bohemia, where the Frankist cult was founded crazy crazy when you get into his family that like maybe i was just thinking she's crazy and then <laughs> oh, it, it, he... oh my god that's some twisted history right there that some some creepy ass group that that drinks the blood of christian children established and built the the government and built the foundation for the country of Israel. That that's tell me if I'm wrong but that's what I think my brain comprehended from that from what Candace was saying. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm not a <laughs> but that doesn't make sense to me. That is just insane. That's insane. Conspiracy theorist, and she's just spouting some seriously gobbly goo. Now, um, all these clips I'm going over, this video is going to be a little long. Um, if you're bored with it, I'm, you know. Um, I will put the um, the clip, the the link to a prostate in there, and I'm going to try to, I got a note to put Daniels in there, and y'all can go ro watch the rest of it, they're going to go on, and, and she's going to say stuff like, yeah, I did my research, and then they're going to just laugh at her, it's funny, it's funny, but I have another video to go over that's interesting, um, that I think it's going to go well with this segment, but please, by all means, uh, go down in the link, check out Check out all the, the resources I'm using and, and think for yourself. Okay, continuing on. Um, this is another conservative 
guy I found. Um, I discovered him. Oh, gosh, I don't know. It's been, it's maybe it's been a few months since I started watching him, and he's got some really good insightful programming. Um, he's a Christian. It's called What Do You Mean? And again, I'll put the link in the description so you can go check out his channel. Um, he has a uh, wonderful biblical insights and and things and you watch and think for yourself but he's done a video follow candace owens and he's saying it needs to be studied and i agree this is why i'm doing this video in fact his i haven't watched this yet but i saw it this morning and i thought you know what i'd like to do a video around his video so i Went and did some research with the other videos. Obviously, the prostate pro prophet. I had wa I had already had seen that a couple of weeks. Ago. I think it's been a week or so since that aired. I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm sure y'all will check it and and know. Um, but I had looked at that, and I was like, wow. Maybe I need to do do a wrap around and let's you know put, compile all this together and see what we all come up with with these different um, content creators and and everybody studying this and researching it. So this is uh, what do you mean YouTube channel? All right, the fall of Candace Owens and it needs to be studied. 2021, Candace Owens was celebrated by Christians for boldly standing up against secular ideologies and defending what many saw as core Christian values. But her recent loyalty to figures like Andrew Tate, Kanye West, and her involvement in anti-Semitic conspiracy theories have left many Christians feeling uneasy, even betrayed. The very loyalty that once made her a conservative champion might now be leading her and those who look up to her down a dangerous path. We'll explore how her loyalty has led to her apparent anti-Semitism, but first, if you need evidence for just how bad things have gotten, take a look at this tweet. Just a few months ago, Candace tweeted, Banned pornography. It's a psychological weapon intended to weaken our men. She followed up by saying that it was created by the most deprived people among us and that we should stigmatize every person who defends or profits from it. Now, most. Okay. Okay. Y'all saw her tweets on that. And who's in indictment? Who's under indictment? The Tater Top Brothers for the lover boy method of trafficking women? And she tweets that? And she stood by him? I watched the interview Candace Owens did with him because even though at the time I didn't like her, I wanted to see what what everybody was interested in in Andrew Tate. He, at one point, Andrew Tate was the most talked about person on the planet. Isn't that insane? The most talked about person, on most inf influential for young men. Like he says these things, he's very masculine. Now, he does say good things. <laughs> Just like the wolf in sheep's clothing. You can come in like, like a bright, loving angel and then on the other hand you're doing these despicable things but i just thought the hypocrisy is when i saw that that she just now she wrote that i was like what Christian supported this sentiment, believing that she was standing for Christian values that promote family and well-being. She even tweeted that the men who struggle with pornography are the intended victims, but this is where things get complicated. You see, her stance made it all the more confusing when she defended and protected someone like Andrew Tate, Ooh. who, right before his arrest, was bragging about exploiting men with corn, saying, Chicks would sit there and hit a keyboard that wasn't plugged in, and me and my brother. Now, he's got that playing fast forward. That's Tate's voice, uh, that he's got that going speed dial, like he sounds like a chipmunk. Or eventually some staff I trained would do all the talking. We were taking their money, oh. all of it. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings. Oh my God. Now I had seen that particular clip of Andrew Tate. Um, I think I saw it on the uh, prostate... Um, Profit show. He was playing a lot of these clips of Andrew Tate snit basically snitching on himself and bragging about how he duped men and women, how he's taken their money. 
But the disgusting thing he just said is he was on the keyboard talking to the men that were giving the women money on on the cams, on the OnlyFans cam, sex cams, or whatever whatever you want to call it. Because it, 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 it's more detailed in some of the other videos where he says um, he said some of the women didn't know how to talk to men, right? What? Okay, that's probably most likely true. Women don't know how to talk to men. Anyway, so he's like, him and I guess his brother or God knows who else was like, we'll take over the keyboard. You just stand there like you're doing it. And they start typing stuff to these men. So they're behind the curtain typing and those men are just throwing money at this girl thinking they're having this conversation with her. It's pathetic. It is pathetic. Loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. You have a guy. Feel bad or no? No. Give me solitary. So it's ironic that she condemned corn as a weapon to weaken others. Yet Tate bragged about doing exactly. You know what's sad is that he has to keep saying corn because of the YouTube. Um, you can't say certain words on YouTube. Which I'm hoping that changes because Mark Zuckerberg just come out and said, oh, yeah, I was under pressure by the Biden-Harris administration to uh, censor speech on Facebook about the jab. So I'm wondering if, if the people of YouTube are going to come out and go, you know what, hey, we were kind of pressured too, and why not everybody just come out, come out, come out, wherever you are. Come out and say, hey, we were, you know, we were pressured by but now we're, you know, hey, it's free speech. It's all about free speech. A lot of content creators are, are posting on YouTube, but they're also, they're running the, like the second part of their show on to Rumble. Because Rumble is not going to censor you, but uh, YouTube can flag you. So, so that's why he's saying that anyway. Exactly that just months before his arrest. She said that those who profit off of it should be stigmatized. Yet, right before the pandemic, Tate tweeted, I make corn. I made so much corn that I made millions. You consume corn. I am God. You are an effing loser. But we knew that already. Learn how to make money by making corn here. But she never stigmatized Tate for it. And all of this is weird because even in her most recent interview of Tate, she talked to him about how bad she thinks that corn is. I didn't watch that interview yet. Um, I don't, I've been busy, I don't know, and I just have, maybe, sometimes you gotta be in the mood for stuff, and I gotta watch her give him softball questions, and him just give a bunch of gobbledygook run about that he's innocent, and that the Matrix is after him. <laughs> it's the Matrix fault, or uh, it's a Jewish conspiracy against him. Was it a coincidence? There were some tweets. I don't know if he's going to bring up those tweets, but there were some tweets that he's he's insinuating some kind of conspiracy against him. It's always it's always everyone the world's against Andrew Tate. It's not Tate taking responsibility for his own actions. But this is the same guy who only a few years ago bragged about getting men addicted to corn in order to control them, tweeting, I super hope the corn addiction gets out of control and ruins everyone's lives. I hope everyone suffers and I don't want to help anyone break free at all. Damn. Keep watching Cam Girls. I want more money. And if you're doubting that this was a sweater. And guys, he made millions off these women. Millions. There's a video of him talking about telling his uh, Ph.D. Uh, classes, pimping for hoes, Ph.D. course, to where these women could break off on their own. They don't really need any, him or anybody else. I mean, if a woman wants to defile herself and go and set up these webcams, they, they can do it. They don't need some a, a second party. That way they get all the money. I do not condone that, by the way, but he preys upon the weak-minded. So, in a video, he is literally saying he doesn't give them the access uh, codes to to the site that the women are uh, performing on, or whatever you want to call it. He doesn't give them those. No. 
he gives them a percentage of what money's coming in, right? And then he tells them that they have to pay taxes, which apparently you didn't at the time he was saying, because uh, it was online or whatever it was. So he, he duped them. He would dupe these women and even even to pay them. It's insane. It's insane. And he said this out of his mouth. I saw videos where he's saying this. I'm just not making this up. Twitter account, he confirmed it in multiple other clips online as well. So now keep in mind that this is the same guy who recorded himself during the COVID lockdowns, saying that he was still running a webcam business. And despite this, Candace still claims that his webcaming business was over 10 years ago. What he said 10 years ago. So this video is from 10 years ago. Being back 10 years. When you talk about Candace from 10 years ago. So fortunately, I had no cameras in my face 10 years ago. The idea that you did something 10 years ago. He gave us this 10 years ago. Talk about these things from 10 years ago. Uh, again, if you found Candace 10 years ago. Which contradicts the fact Tate's own recorded testimony and his and Candace said she did her research and that first interview she did with him now that other interview he showed a moment ago is, is a newer one the first interview she did with him she says oh yeah I did my research I read the indictment and there was stuff as early as 2020 2021 2022 of them doing this stuff I don't know what's wrong with her his countless tweets and still to this day she continues campaigning for tate spreading all kinds of falsehoods for him but all of this has left christians confused i mean on the one hand she talks about her strong conviction against corn while on the other she continues to platform and defend tate despite his entire empire being built on corn well the only way that this would make sense is if candace didn't know tate or about tate prior to his arrest so is that what happened well no. we may have gotten a little more insight into that question during a recent live stream candace did a few days Days ago but not based on what she said instead based on what was behind her if you've watched any of her streams from her home office you may have noticed something interesting if you zoom in right here you can see a picture of her husband george farmer from what appears to be several years ago and if you look to the side of him he's sitting next to none other than andrew tate now we knew that tate and candace had met before but well, you know, in the last uh, one of the videos we watched uh, through these segments, uh, even her father-in-law has distanced himself from them. Probably for more of the anti-Semitism uh, comments that she's been making. But he should have come out and said something like, yeah, you shouldn't be lining yourself up with, with Andrew Tate. I don't know. I, look. I would think, obviously, she's smarter than me. Let's just say that. I, I, I don't have no problem saying that. And she's got a team. I don't have a team. I have me. <laughs> she's got a team to do research. She probably has advisors, too. I would assume. She's got millions of followers. You need help. You need help with research to, to, get, to do these awesome programs. And they look professional, her programs, of course. She's got a team. But why didn't this team say, why are you saying this is not, you know, didn't you? Here, we just did the research for you, for the indictments, all the video of the past 10 years of him saying horrendous things. Would she just ignored all that? What is going on? But what we didn't know was how deep it really went. According to her husband, he's known Tate for a very long time. I've known Andrew since before Andrew was Andrew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I've known Andrew since before he was famous, I guess. Andrew is a, is a great guy. But what most people didn't know was that Candace also met Tate several years ago, which could explain why in her past episodes talking about Tate's charges. Can he's such a great guy, guy. There's another video of uh, Andrew Tate. I have no idea who leaked it. I don't have a team of researchers pulling this crap up for me where I can go pull it up. Wouldn't that be nice? Pull up that video. Boom, and they pull it up. Um, he's beating a woman. He's literally beating her into submission to get her to say whatever he wanted her to say. I watched it. It was disturbing. 
Candace didn't distance herself from Tate, but instead went to extreme lengths to protect him, even using an episode to discredit an alleged victim who accused Tate of abuse. And this is where things started looking really suspect. Given that Tate's abuser also accused another man when she was 15 years old, and that man was sentenced to 24 years in prison because of it, because of this, Candace made an episode trying to discredit this girl's credibility. In the episode, she even went so far as to refuse to say the name of the convicted felon in order to protect his identity, while repeatedly mentioning the underage girl's name in the episode without censoring it. The first case involves a man who I am not going to name, and the only reason I'm not going to name him is because at the time of the allegations against him, Emma was in fact a minor. Oh my God. Why would she name? Emma was a minor at the time that this guy was accused and put in prison. She says the kid's name. It doesn't even matter if the guy, if, if she thinks the guy's innocent. I don't know if he's innocent or guilty. Don't misunderstand. But she still shouldn't have said the girl's name. This is ridiculous. That doesn't take a rocket science. What is, what is, her, what is her motivation? What is going on here? By the way, you're going to hear some beeps when I'm discussing this case. If I accidentally say his name, we intend to just beep it out. It was almost as if Candace was willing to ignore or excuse the very values that she claims to stand for, all because of her personal loyalty to Andrew Tate. Another thing that Tate said in that tweet was that he was God, which is another thing that Candace claims to hate. She claims to hate blasphemy, and Christians have applauded her for defending Christian values by taking a stance against it. Earlier this year, she even posted a video condemning the rapper Lil Nas X for That is mocking Jesus Christ and it's obviously meant to be blasphemous. But not even a month later, she endorsed Kanye's Vultures album where Kanye says, I'm the new Jesus explicit. And this wasn't just art either. Wow. But Candace Owens does her research and she reads books. Apparently she listened to the songs. Apparently she didn't hear him say that. <laughs> Parents out there needs to be, you need to be vigilant about this music. It's downright demonic. It really is. Following the release of his album, Kanye said multiple times that he's God. So if Candace was outraged by Lil Nas X for dressing up on a cross and she considered it to be blasphemy, then this old picture of Kanye and him saying that he's the new Jesus should also be considered blasphemy. And just to be clear, given that she's friends of Kanye, I don't expect her to personally attack him, but there's also no need to go out of the way to promote this album if blasphemy really does bother her so much. Okay, so we're seeing a pattern here. <coughs> Her husband's friends, and had been friends with the tater tot since before he was a tater tot. Okay? Now she's been friends with, with Kanye. So what's the pattern? She don't ditch dirt on her friends. <laughs> oh, they can do what they want. It's okay. I'll just turn a blind eye. Again, Candace does her research. And those aren't the only Christian values that Candace seems to turn a blind eye to. Candace has condemned and shamed countless women for being immodest, including Kim Kardashian and Madonna, by saying that they're basically punning corn on the internet for being nearly naked. But that same album she promoted in multiple tweets also features Kanye's naked wife on the cover. And as Candace herself said, There needs to either be a real standard, right? Or there should be no double standards. We just need to have a real standard to not allow pornography on the internet. She's also made several podcasts attacking rappers for having degenerate lyrics, but literally every single thing that she scolds and shames other rappers for promoting in their lyrics is also being promoted in Kanye's Vultures album. And rather than being infuriated with it, she praises it. Once again, her value seems- Do as I say, not as I do. What's going on here? Are we going to say Candace is a hypocrite? Well, it's looking that way. It's looking that way. Y'all got to make your own minds up. Go, go do, go do research. <laughs> I mean, I have suspected her being a hypocrite for a long time. For at least a year. I guess it's been like a year. When she did that interview with him after i had seen i had already 
seen the indictment on the Tater Tot brothers. She defended them. She didn't, she couldn't understand why the world was attacking them, that the Matrix was after him. Seem to be compromised by selective loyalty. But Candace's loyalty to individuals like Andrew Tate and Kanye West is only one part of the problem. Her unwavering commitment to certain ideologies has led her down an even more dangerous path. Hey, what is it about Hitler? How, why is he the most evil? Where did the idea of a concentration camp come from? The Bolsheviks, Ataturk was Don May. Damon Ford was a Kabbalist. Yell was established by Frankists. Israelis that were working at the World Trade Center who were forewarned of the attack. This is especially... What is going on? What? I said earlier in the, in the other videos, it's like, what is her... What's her motivation on attacking the Jews? What's going on here? Why is she doing this? I don't understand it. Coming up with all these crazy theories? Ch trying to change his history? Point the finger at them? There's some kind of uh, demon-worshipping, child-blood-drinking occults? <laughs> what the hell? evident in her recent flirtation with anti-Semitic conspiracy theories where her loyalty to these ideas has seemed to cause her to overlook facts and compromise her Christian values. You see, Candace has built a reputation for calling out misinformation and challenging mainstream media narratives. However, in recent years, Candace has become a powerful media figure herself, reaching nearly 60 million views per month, which surpasses the prime time viewership of major news networks like MSNBC. So her influence carries a lot of responsibility, making it crucial for her to remain steadfast in the Christian value of not bearing false witness. If you've been following her... Well, that might be a reason why she's doing what she's doing, guys. I think that might have just answered my question. Get them in under false pretenses. I'm just, I'm just assuming here on what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I have been seeing and hearing over months or this past year of watching uh stuff about all of this what is she doing she's got a big following she lures him in with her christianity values and what more people probably are for oh yeah we don't want pornography the, the corn on on the internet we don't want our children looking at it we want to Condemn people who are all about that. Condemn these rappers who are blasphemous Christ. But yet, she turns around and does all this other stuff. So, is it to confuse people? Or does she think she, her audience, her audiences are stupid? I, I'm just asking questions here. Because if anybody with any kind of common sense, Christian values, starts seeing this, of course, I questioned her a long time ago. Like, something's wrong here. And I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. So, I don't know if she's just thinking that her, her audience is just a, a bunch of minds full of mush and the sheep are just going to come, no matter what she says, or to manipulate them. I don't know. Just asking questions. Her content lately, you can't help but notice that she seems to trace every world problem back to the Jews in some way. But the only problem every is time. she consistently gets her facts wrong. So much so that even Nick Fuentes, who's known as the most prolific anti-Semite of our generation, he even had to call her out for how much she gets wrong. And she's calling them the Bolshevists, and she says that, you know, she gets all the details wrong about that. And then she says Stalin was Jewish. Stalin was not Jewish. And then she says Ataturk was secretly Jewish. Ataturk was not secretly Jewish. And then, and you know, but I didn't say anything. I said, whatever. You know, I said, oh, well, you know, not everyone's perfect. I said, yeah, it's not really a good look, but you know, she's learning. I, I said, she's gonna get on the ball eventually. So I didn't say anything. I held my tongue, even though that was not really a good look, okay? You can't really go hard like that and stake the reputation of you and everybody on this and then, like, get it wrong really severely over and over. She's talking about, you know, all this stuff that, like, it just doesn't even really make any sense. You know, and the difference between me and her, one, I'm a really good researcher. Two, I really know what the f I'm talking about because I've been doing this a long time. Now, when someone with views as extreme as Nick Fuentes criticized
Oh my gosh. You know it's bad. This guy. This guy comes out and says. Obviously she didn't do her research. <laughs> I mean this guy. It's a white supremacist. Left loon extremist to the nth degree. And he says she gets it wrong. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Damn. Damn. That's insane. That is... Oh, my God. Guys. You know it's bad. When this guy comes out and says, I don't know what you're talking about. You... I mean, it's like he's defending the Jews. And he's like a Nazi kind of guy. He's defending them against her on what she's saying. Nah, the Jews aren't, they didn't drink children's blood. No, you got it wrong. We hate them for different reasons, but not for that. Oh my God, this is insane. Besides you for inaccuracies, that's a clear sign that something has gone seriously wrong. Now, we won't get too deep into the weeds here, but take a look at the Frankist conspiracy theory that she's been arguing for lately. She argued that Theodore Herzl, a Zionist leader who helped lay the foundation for the creation of Israel, was connected to the Frankists because they were from the same region. However, Jacob Frank was born in 1726 in a small town in modern day Ukraine, and Herzl was born almost 400 miles away in Budapest almost 100 years later. I mean, to see the problem, this is like claiming. Now, uh, the prostate prophet, he goes into a good detail of the history of the man he's just talking about. That uh, Candace Owens says, you know, started all this crap. The Frankist guy. So, definitely check that out because you're going to get another bit, a little more extensive history in, in the prostate prophet's uh, video. Definitely check that out that because a gang was founded 100 years and 400 miles from where you were born that you must be a part of it and she was also wrong about leo frank being a frankist a claim that lacks historical support and seems to be based on only a shared last name she claimed that the frankists were responsible for mission christians which is something that they weren't even accused of so the pattern of inaccuracies is frequent and concerning particularly when discussing sensitive topics like these and i get that it's easy to get caught up in compelling stories but it's also crucial to approach these sorts of topics with careful research and an open mind. Scott like, nobody's going to look that up. They, the two people she's connected together were born 100 years apart. You know, it's funny. And this is serious, too. I say that a lot. But it just... Sometimes you just got to you gotta laugh to, to release some tension. Because, Dad, blame. What the... They were born 100 years apart, 500 miles of, of distance from each other. Whatever he said, how many miles apart, it was like, seriously. Scholars have found significant issues with all of these claims, and of course, that doesn't mean that we should just dismiss these concerns outright, but it does mean that we should be especially cautious and make sure we're not unintentionally spreading harmful misinformation, especially when we have platforms as big as hers. So her frequent pattern of getting things wrong has understandably led to significant pushback against her claims. And this is one of the reasons for why her claims have been receiving so much pushback. One commenter on Twitter said, interesting, I don't recall anyone getting this triggered when Candace was dunking on blacks. And she responded by saying, no, that was always allowed and encouraged, revealing once again her selective loyalty to certain ideologies over others. Some interpreted her response to be evidence that she was grifting the entire time she worked at the Daily Wire, which could be defended by taking a look at her documentary on George Floyd, The Greatest Lie Ever Sold. Now, of course, not everything that she said in this documentary was false, and many of us applauded her for the times when she looked at the facts and told uncomfortable truths. But if you Maybe when it fits her own narrative that her team and herself are actually going to do the research and report what they find to be accurate, not just made stuff up out of whole cloth. Like her not reporting accurate on Andrew Tate. Guys, I'm going to say it too. Tucker, Tucker Carlson did the same thing. He interviews him. 
Andrew Tate and gives him softball questions. He didn't hammer him over the main issues. Now, the only thing I can think of, if I'm going to have to defend Tucker Carlson, which I don't want to, because he has a team, he has a staff to do this research, and did he read the indictment? Or there was a stipulation before the interview is what I'm thinking. That's the only conclusion I could probably come to other than why would Tucker Carlson not attack him? Not, not. I guess attacking is not the, the way to go. Uh, interview him about the facts. Talk to him about I, I probably some of the case he couldn't talk about. But it was a softball interview. Tucker Carlson gave um, Andrew Tate. Y'all go look at it. Go watch it. I watched it. I watched Candace Owens this one too. She was just, uh, you know, boom, just agreeing with him. Oh, it happened 10 years ago. You poor thing. Yeah, I wouldn't hold that against you. And Tucker Carlson, pretty much the same. So I, I don't know what his intentions are. I really, I really don't. Maybe there were stipulations when he interviewed him, uh, kind of like the, uh, the the Harrison interview last night, which I haven't watched it yet. But because they had pre pre arranged uh, questions, how are they going to handle this? That's the only thing I can think of Tucker Carlson, by the way. If you watched the documentary alongside of the trial, you likely noticed that she missed or ignored some critical points. Yes. So Candace tried to argue that Chauvin's knee was not on Floyd's neck, but on his shoulder blade. However, she didn't include the rest of the cross-examination, which revealed a much different story. At that moment in time that the knee of the defendant was more towards the shoulder blade, is that right? That is correct. That was at a time where the ambulance had already arrived? Yes very shortly before they loaded Mr. Floyd onto the gurney. Is that, that, is, that is correct. And, and so the knee of Mr. F of the defendant was on Mr. Floyd's neck up until the time you just pointed out. Yes, uh, when I viewed that video portion, um, that is the first time that I had seen uh, the knee of the defendant on the shoulder blade area. Now, no matter what... I never saw that documentary. I don't know if you had to be one of her um, subscribers where you pay to get her extra crap. I didn't see that. I can't comment on that. And I'm not going to because I didn't do my research. What you think about the George Floyd trial, that's not the point of what I'm getting across here. It doesn't matter if you think that he was in the right or the wrong for the sake of this video. The point is that by selectively editing the testimony, Kenneth presented a narrative that fit with her agenda, but didn't align with the full truth. And there are several other examples of this, like how she included a clip of a witness who was asked, Did it appear that Mr. Floyd said, I ate too many drugs? Yes, it did. But she didn't show the rest of the conversation in which the witness clarified. Having heard it in context, are you able to tell uh, what Mr. Floyd is saying there? Yes, I believe Mr. Floyd was saying, I ain't do no drugs. But perhaps the most significant omission was when Candace brought in an anti-BLM investigator who claimed that Floyd died from an overdose. She included selective clips from the trial to support this claim, but omitted the strong evidence that disproved her claim. Mr. Floyd died from positional asphyxia, which is a fancy way of saying he died because he had no oxygen left in his body. Uh, you, you have lots of experience treating patients uh, suffering from opioid overdoses. Yes, sir, I do. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury whether fentanyl overdose causes air hunger? No, it does not. Um, the only time it could is if you've overdosed, and but it's not air hunger because you are going to sleep. You're not hungry at all. You're sleeping. When you watch those videos and you, we go through them, what is his respiration? He's breathing. He's talking. He's not snoring. He is saying, you know, please, please get off of me. I want to breathe. I can't breathe. That is not a fentanyl overdose. That is somebody begging to breathe. If a person. Wow. I didn't watch that trial. I don't know why I did it at the time. Who knows? But I think I might want to go back and watch that. That's this is interesting. 
to assert uh, is suffering from a fentanyl overdose, would you describe that person then as alert? No, sir, they're not going to be alert, they're going to be sleeping. Would you describe them as oriented? Uh, no, they're going to be, their brain is going to be in sleep mode or not breathing mode. And was George Floyd oriented? Oh, he was. He gave appropriate responses, name, date of birth. He knew where he was and what was happening. He knew exactly where he was, what he was doing and responding appropriately. This omission not only misrepresented the medical evidence, but it also downplayed the severity of Floyd's struggle to breathe. Her selective editing and omissions of critical facts throughout the entire documentary highlight a pattern of her misleading her audience to fit a narrative which compromises the Christian value of impartiality in pursuit of the truth. And to be clear, I am not accusing her of doing this intentionally because I have no idea what her motives are. But given how often she sees- Yeah, but... She ha again, she has a staff. She has control of her content. Yeah, she was working for the Daily Wire. Now, I don't know if she, she probably was with the Daily Wire when this happened. I'm not sure. See, I didn't do my research. But the thing is, she has a staff. They talk about this stuff. They discuss this stuff when they're putting a documentary together. You have an inkling of, okay... We're going to cover the trial. We're going to cover Floyd's trial. Yeah, you should probably bring up all the heinous things he did. He was a terrible person. Not to spill, speak ill of the dead. I'm not. I'm sorry this happened to this man. But he wasn't like the ideal citizen that you'd want your daughter to marry and raise a family. I don't know how else nicer I can put that. But. I agree with him is that that testimony right there is like, no, it doesn't appear from, from the testimony of that. Now, I haven't seen an, uh, what was the, um, the toxicology report. Now, I know he was saying that he didn't die from a fentanyl overdose or a drug overdose. <laughs> I would still be curious of what the toxicology was in his body. That still doesn't excuse the fact that uh he was it seems like he was suffered from asphyxiation uh because the, the police officer had that on his back had his knee on his back holding him down he can't breathe pushing back here on that part right there it's pushing on his lungs i guess i don't know i'm not an expert but that's per, that's uh that's some profound testimony for the defense against the police officer if he was already in custody and he's handcuffed and he dies because you got your knee on him, then yes, that police officer needs to be held accountable for that. Again, it's not going to excuse the facts of anything else that, that Floyd had done where he probably would need to serve time or whatever the case may be. I'm just saying it, sound, it seems to me just that little bit is showing me that, that the police officer is guilty. Now, I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying. And I'm not biased on either way. But, you know, I would I like to watch the trials and and listen to both sides of the evidence. And where is it pointing to? That little piece of evidence is pointing to the police officer kept his knee on him too long. That's what it looks like to me seems to get her facts wrong or presents partial facts that are misleading, it's no wonder why her credibility is being seriously questioned, especially by Christians who once supported her. All right, so as we've seen, Candace's actions reveal just how easy it is to let our loyalty cloud our judgment and lead us away from the truth. And this isn't just about Candace, it's a reminder for all of us, including myself. In the Gospels, we see that Jesus not only exemplified perfect integrity, truthfulness, and impartiality, but he also challenged the bias and loyalties of those around him. He taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves, to stand up for the truth, and to avoid showing favoritism. And unlike most of us, Jesus never compromised his values to gain favor with the crowd or to support a particular agenda. Instead, he remained faithful to God's truth even when it cost him his life. Now, we all face moments where our loyalty is tested, and there's going to be times when we get it wrong or we miss the mark. It's incredibly difficult to see our own biases and how they filter our judgment of situations. And even for me, despite how hard I try to be objective, I constantly catch myself showing favoritism and partiality. The struggle is nearly inescapable. I'm guilty of the same thing. 
I think we all do it like when you realize, oh, but you have to put yourself in check and go, well, that's not what the evidence is saying or what the facts are saying or whatever the case may be in whatever situation it may be. That you have to you have to check yourself to make sure that you're not, you know, leaning one way because you want it to. Right? It has to go with what is fact is fact. That's it. That's it. Well, because we're still in these sinful bodies. But one thing that can really help us here is to continue to place our loyalty to Christ above all else. Loyalty is a very good thing and a very good trait to have. But if our loyalty to anything or anyone else takes precedence over our loyalty to Christ and his commands, then we run into all kinds of issues. Sin always tries to tempt us with a good thing for evil outcomes. So we need to ask ourselves, where are we placing our loyalty? Are we allowing our commitment to Christ and his teachings to be compromised by our allegiance to people, ideas, or movements, it's easy to get caught up in the noise of the world, but we have to remember that our ultimate loyalty is to Jesus. And his death and resurrection provide not just forgiveness, but by following his teachings, we can also be transformed and grow into people who love truth, show impartiality, and stand firm in our conviction. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for waiting around to the end. If you haven't seen one of these videos, go ahead and check them out, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, y'all need to check him out. He is fab. Fabu. All right, there we go. Let's do that. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. It was quite lengthy, but hey, some things well done. I don't know if I did it well done. I mean, I'm still learning how to do stuff, and um, like I said, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But Candace Owens has some issues. She's got some splainings to do. She got some explainings to do. I guess if she's going to get up and explain herself, and as she should, probably, she's in the public eye. This is what happens. He's saying things. People can question me, too. Yeah, I probably say things I probably shouldn't have. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> but I'm going to put these links in the... Um, in the description and let you guys go and look at all this this fun stuff and watch watch his channels um and i like how he does that at the end you know he gives uh words of encouragement and some scripture it feels good it does feel good we need reminders all the time i know i do keep reminding myself hey yeah you gotta what no don't do that no and should you do that no but you know that this kind of thing we all have to we all do this we all have uh these struggles and whether want something to fit our agenda yeah because sometimes the truth hurts and you gotta face it and that's the way it is and that's the way it is well guys i hope everyone has a blessed Labor Day weekend, 2024. Good fellowship with family, friends, good food that the Lord has blessed with. And, and just have an all-around good time. And be safe, people. Be safe this weekend. Um, and have a blessed day. And thank you so much. And be sure, like and share. Yeah, this is the griff right here. Like and share, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you feel if you feel compelled to, please do. If not, that's fine. It's okay. I have to have patience. And thank you so much.